Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Tim Hart, branch manager of Van Dyke Mortgage here in Fort Myers. Welcome to an episode of the Heartbeat for Realtors podcast. Hey, want to come to you. Uh, been coming up a lot lately, and that's the issue of co-signing. So this may help your clients. It may help you. Um, but I've been having more and more people uh, come to us for financing, and they've co-signed for somebody in the past. And sometimes this can cause problems. And I kind of want to go over that a little bit, like the problems that the co-signing causes and how to also fix it. So we'll be covering a few of those things during this. But first, I want to go over an example of where this co-signing uh, for like your family, friends, whoever, <clears throat> how it can hurt you um, because it can a lot. So I had a borrower, this is about a year ago, um, a plus plus borrower, 740 scores, you know, the whole nine yards all her life, right? 20% down, made, uh, you know, a hundred and something thousand dollars a year and slam dunk loan. Okay. We pull the credit, not so much, 575 credit score. She flips out. And then I explained to her that, hey, you have a four wheeler here that you co signed for. Actually, I didn't know it was a four wheeler. It said like Yamaha on it, uh, on the credit. But her son, uh, had paid this account late 30 days for about two years straight. Okay. So two years worth of 30 day late payments. She never knew about it. Um, had no access to the accounts or anything and basically it ruined her credit score. So it took her almost six months to a year for those lates were finally off her credit because if you co-sign for somebody and they're late, that's your fault too. You're responsible for it on the credit report. You co-sign for them. It affects your score as well. So <clears throat> a couple of things you want to keep an eye out for um, on also why you don't want to ever co-sign for somebody if you can avoid it uh, is debt to income ratio. That's another problem where if you co-sign for your kid's car and that payment's $400 a month, well, that's going to be counted against you. All right. That's going to be counted against you unless... And here's one of the keys to it. Unless you're able to provide 12 months proof of payment from that person you co-signed for, okay? Um, you gotta provide 12 months proof of payments and it has to be from an account that your name is not on. If you do that, you can count the debt against you. And we also have to ensure that they paid it on time. So there's a lot of different things that you have to figure out with that, a lot of risk, extra work. The best thing to do when it comes to co-signing for your kids I'm using kids because that's mainly what everyone co-signs for is don't do it. All right. Try to find other ways to get around that. <clears throat> now, one thing, I know one thing, but a few things we can talk about is what if you have to, you know, what if you have to co-sign for somebody um, on a vehicle, on a student loan or even their house. All right. Um, Cause some people they have to, and they need it and you want to do it. I'm going to give you a couple tips on what you need to do if you have to do that. So one thing is do your best to make sure they are on the note with you. Okay. Do your best to make sure that happens. One reason is, is if you're doing an FHA loan, you've got to have them on the note and then you have to have 12 months proof of payments and you can remove them off, or you can remove that debt off your debt to income ratio. If you don't have them on the note and it's just you with them making the payments for an FHA loan, <clears throat> you can't remove the debt the debt has to be counted against you, okay? Conventional loans is different. So that's one thing, make sure they're on the note. Second thing is be sure you have access to the online account for that. And also make sure you get access to the bill. Um, it will be much better if the bill goes to you. If, they, if the place can send out two bills, that'd be even better. But make sure you have access to the online account and then you're checking in and making sure they're paying it on time. Do not rely on them to pay it on time, okay? You don't wanna risk it. Uh, the next thing is make sure they pay for it out of their own account with their name on it. You don't want your name anywhere near it on the account that they pay for. You make sure they pay for it and out of their account and then you will um, be able to alleviate that debt 12 months down the road if you were trying to obtain financing somewhere else. Um, last but not least, I would look at refinancing as soon as possible, okay? have an exit strategy. Hey, in six months to a year, we're going to refinance me off of it. You're going to be in a better place. 
have some kind of plan that will allow you to refinance off of that debt, okay? That'd be my tips for you on that one. So if you do have any other questions or concerns on the credit, maybe how it's affecting you, uh, you know, any other tips or suggestions that I can give you, I'm always here to help. Hopefully this helps you if you're thinking about uh, co-signing or you have a client that's having problems with it. Uh, remember, 12 months canceled checks from the person they co-signed for paying out of their account without the borrower's name on it. Whew, it's a lot. So anyhow, moral of the story, don't co-sign for your kids if you can avoid it. All right, so I hope that helps a little bit. Give me a call anytime. I'm always here to serve. Call my cell, 239-910-5668. Uh, you can reach my website, timhartjr.com, and all the social medias out there, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, all that fun stuff. So again, guys, take care. If I can ever help you or your clients with a mortgage pre-approval, please let me know. Have a great day. See you later.